I'm Greg with OctoClean and welcome back to our Train With Us series. Today we're talking about bloodborne pathogens and specifically cleaning up blood spills or bloodborne pathogen spills, which could be blood, vomit, or any bodily fluid. So let's get started. Of course, what we want to look at first is what are we going to use to disinfect that surface, whether it be a floor, um, a countertop like we're dealing with here today. Um, and let's talk about that first. So you can see I have here, I've got two and one fourth cup of water right here. And I've got just regular household bleach. So 5.25% bleach right here. Now, what it says is I wanna make a one to 10 dilution with a three minute dwell time. So a three minute contact time. It's gonna stay wet for three minutes. Very important for it to work properly. So all I was very simple, what I'm gonna do is show you, I'm gonna take your lid off your bleach. And again, this is two and one fourth cup of just regular tap water. And to make my 10 to one dilution ratio that they're requiring, I'm gonna put one fourth cup of just regular household bleach into this water. Now I have my proper diluted bleach or disinfectant, tuberculotal disinfectant for bloodborne pathogens, which could be blood, which again could be vomit, just bodily fluid is what we're looking at. We're gonna treat everything as it's a contagion agent when it's on the floor. So we spilt our fake blood here to kind of give us a real time, hey, we walked in and this is what we saw. So let's talk about the right way to do this. First thing is to do is to limit access to the area. So if this was on the floor, let's say, I'm putting up wet floor signs, anything to keep people away from making this small little patch of blood be trampled everywhere or walked through a building. So what am I gonna need to clean this up? Common sense tells me the first thing I need to do is put my gloves on. I'm gonna open up my, blood, my hazardous waste bag, um, have it open to where you don't need to reach in and out very often, that you can just use it. So. First thing I wanna do before I put any disinfectant or anything, I wanna do what I can to soak this up. So you notice I have my gloves on. Now I wanna do, like I said, as much as I can. It's gonna go in there, I'm gonna to touch my towels. I wanna to soak this up as much as possible. All right, I'm gonna take these gloves off because I don't want to grab the clean bottle with possible contamination on my hands. So what I'm gonna do from the inside, clean thumb from the inside, and I'm putting these in my bag. I'll grab another set of gloves. Now this, remember we talked about with a three minute dwell time or kill clean is what we talk about. So I'm going to spray the surface. This is where I like to say it's, it's making us safe to touch whatever's contaminated on this surface. And we're gonna consider everything to be contaminated. If you walk in and you don't know what that spill is, whether it be vomit, feces, whatever it is, treat it like it is a bloodborne pathogen spill like we're dealing with here today. So that three minutes will pass quickly. And then I'm gonna do exactly like I did here. I wanna use my paper towels to wipe my surface. Put these in and again i'm going to do the exact same thing because my last step i'm going to do is i'm going to wipe it using a wipe do i have to do that no you could also do where you're just going to spray the surface and let it air dry so if, let's say i have my bleach i would just spray my surface and let it air dry but we do have our tuberculosis wipes here today so we can go ahead and wipe that using those just to show you how that actually works so we're looking at three minutes it would need to stay wet for this to work, where this is a two minute claim, or in essence, I'm not wringing it out, I'm just gonna wipe it, and I'm gonna wipe the whole affected area, and I'm gonna let it dry. Now, as you can see, I'm not done. So the last thing we're gonna do is dispose of the waste that we created by cleaning this up. So basically everything that's in this biohazardous waste bag that I have here to my right. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove my gloves. That's gonna go in this bag. 
Now I'm gonna place another set of gloves on just to be safe. I know it's using a lot of gloves, but we are, I would rather be safe than sorry any day. Now I'm gonna teach you the proper way to tie a biohazardous waste bag when I'm done with it, like I am right now. So you notice I'm only gonna to touch the outside of my bag. I'm gonna handle my bag from the top. I'm not touching the bottom. I'm keeping it away from my body. I'm gonna do what they call a single knot. Having my right hand low and I'm gonna spin the top and I'm gonna tie a single knot. This single knot enables me to make sure that if this bag does, let's say, turn upside down, it's not gonna leak everywhere. That is the proper way to tie a biohazardous waste bag. And then we would put it in a watertight container. So rolling trash can, something like that, and dispose of this waste properly. So for, for now, we're gonna put it there. Um, so of course, when we're done, we're throwing away our gloves, regular waste, washing our hands, and we're ready to continue our duties. So this is the proper way per OSHA to clean up a blood spill or bloodborne pathogen spill, which again, we're gonna talk about that could be blood, vomit, saliva, bodily fluids. Treat any of those like they are a contagion and you guys will be safe. So treat it just like this. And if you noticed, as long as you're doing it the right way, you can stay completely safe. I wanna thank you for training with us today and I look forward to seeing you guys on our next video in our Train With Us series.